So I was going to sit around all day and catch up on my soap operas, but 4Low Pro told me he was doing ECGS bushing replacement on one of his friend's trucks he's also installing a lift on, so I thought free content's always good. I don't need the ECGS bushing for myself yet, but chances are some of you probably will after you lift your truck, so I figured might as well film the process and show you guys what's involved. Incidentally, since I'm over at 4Low Pro's house so much, he was nice enough to rent me some space so I can just stay here, just to, you know, so the commute's easier for recording videos for you guys. So he was nice enough to rent me 300 square feet of space under his deck. Welcome back to the Tacoma Holic channel, everybody. If this is your first time stopping by, today is the best day of all days to subscribe because all memberships to the Tacoma Holic YouTube channel are completely free. So go ahead and subscribe now. All right, guys, we are getting ready to show the process of the ECGS bushing install. This is on a third gen Tacoma, but the process should be if not identical, very similar on second gen Tacomas. We're going to show you what you need to remove and actually how to install the new clamshell bushing from ECGS, which replaces the needle nose bushing or needle bearing. I can't remember what it's called exactly. Why do I need to know this? And this is one of the common vibes you will get on your Tacoma after you lift it. And I believe the easiest way to tell if the ECGS bushing will fix the situation is if you get a vibe, if you're driving down on a, say, like a straight road, if you have the vibe, you put your truck into four high, and if the vibe instantly goes away, then you know the ECGS bushing will fix that vibe. If you put it into four high and you still have the vibe, well, then the vibe's probably something else. So today we are gonna show you the process. Okay, first step is to remove the cap right here, and the trick is to remove it to get some like flat edge under there that's fine enough to get under there so you can pop it off, but without damaging it so stuff can get under there. It's maybe a smaller screwdriver, something like that should work. See, he's going around the whole perimeter of it, not just popping it from one side only. Less likely to damage the cap. There it goes. Yeah. Kind of an awkward angle, huh? Yeah. <laughs> There it goes. Ooh. Nice and shiny. That is very clean. This truck has, what, 1,200 miles on it, you said? So yeah, everything is beautiful right now. No dents. No dents. Next up, take some regular pliers and remove the cotter pin. And that is one of the biggest cotter pins I've seen. <laughs> Thirty-five mil time. Yep. Next part, you will need a thirty-five millimeter bit. That is a huge bit to get the giant nut off right there. Yep. The alternative, if you don't have one of these, is a breaker bar and have somebody uh, on the brakes of the truck to keep this from spitting. Hmm. With this, you don't need that. Yeah. It'll just take it off. Right off. All right. Next step, we are cotter pin on the top of the tie rod. And this is just to get all this stuff to swing out of the way so you can get to where you need to be working. Nineteen millimeter socket for that top bolt. And what was this called again? It's like a tie rod and puller or <laughs> something like that. A useful be... tool to have for this. I'll go ahead and link that right down below. You can see it just sort of slides over either end of the, the tie rod so you can get it free. Well, that was easy. Nice and easy. Yeah. All right, so that's out of the way. 
This tool saves a lot of headaches. So now you gotta pop the CV axle out of here. Sometimes it'll pop free on newer trucks, it won't. <laughs> you do not want a hammer on the end of it. Right. You'll mess up the threads, can't get the nut back on. So you got a couple options. I like to use a centering punch. punch. Fits right there in that hole. Okay. And then a three pound hammer. There it is, yeah, it popped loose behind there. And again, when you're pulling all this stuff free, just make sure nothing's stuck on something like a hose, a wire, whatever, so it doesn't rip free. It's right there. Maybe a little bit more. There it goes. Right. Bungee cord that out of the way just so it's a little more convenient. There you All go. right. So there's the exposed CV. Now the really fun part, right? factory Toyota skid plate to have more access back there at the, I guess the innermost part of where the CV attaches to the diff. Okay, so he is using a large pry bar to try to pry the CV off from the back because you want to obviously put as small a risk as possible so you don't damage anything. So this is the first method. If this doesn't work, on to plan B. And when looking at this from the front of the truck, he's prying on the left side of the rubber uh, sealant right against the, where it connects to the diff right there. Okay, so that didn't work, and he didn't really expect it to because he's, he said on newer trucks, it is very stubborn there to get the CV off that first time. So now, it's hammer time. Stop. Hammer time. Okay, so pry bar did not work, so he we have a little setup here. This is steel cable. Yeah, braided steel cable. There's little notches on the back of the CV that are rested, and you just kind of cinch it on, okay. and then, I have a hammer in it. Makes a hammer, like an impromptu yeah, slide hammer. Loop through the shackle and he's yeah. pretty much gonna just yank it out. Tug of war and it'll hopefully pop free and obviously have something down here to collect collect any of the oil that might leak out since this is coming from your front diff. Yeah. So we'll So I'm gonna stand back. <laughs> Fingers crossed. There it goes. Got it. I was gonna say, I thought I saw it move a little bit. <laughs> okay, so obviously be prepared for it to really come loose because that's a pretty hard core. Yeah, you don't want it to. It came out. Yeah, don't have flip flops on or anything <laughs> like that. So it's good though. Didn't damage it. And a little oil dripped out, so you know you might replenish a little, but not a crazy amount. Just have that little catch pan oh, ready just in good. case. All right, an extra tip just to keep these threads from getting damaged when you pull that out, go ahead and put that uh, nut back on there to protect that so when it pulls free, as you can see how quickly it pulled free when it came, uh, so no damage gets there to the end. Okay, so this piece right here, this comes with the removal tool, right? Yeah. And I believe this has already been corrected if you are buying one of the ECGS removal tools from this day forward. This is one of the older ones. He took his grinder and just shaved off one side just a little bit so it can actually slip in there where we pulled the CV out uh, because if it's straight, you just have to fight with it a little bit so it makes that a lot easier. If you use a 22 millimeter, it would save a lot of time if you buy a ratcheting 22 millimeter just for this. Yeah. I was gonna buy one before today, but I forgot. Okay. So he's just taking like some plastic. He's gonna shove that in the opening back there so he doesn't lose any pieces of the tools in there, which obviously you don't want. And of course, don't forget to grab that when you're all said and done. You don't want to leave that in there, obviously. And that'll keep any more diff fluid from draining out also. Okay, so here is the rest of the removal tool you can get from ECGS. I'll link that and everything else, of course, right down below. And he did sort of lightly tap in the end piece for the removal tool in the opening. 
so we can pull the old needle bearing out. And that just tightens down on the piece that's already in there. Yeah, the inside piece is threaded. This slips in there. I like to get it a good bit in the little removal tool. Okay. And then I'll do this. That reminds me though. You can place two sockets in between here and mm -hmm. here. That way this isn't resting on the seal itself. Maybe just damage, helps, yeah. helps save the uh, seal right. from getting damaged. Quick shot of the tool in the opening right there so you can see. Is that a 22 you said? 22, yeah. 22 millimeter. <laughs> About 50 one eighth turns, huh? Yeah, this is where the ratcheting will be nice. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but if you look in there, you can see the needle bearing itself actually coming out. Okay. It's very visible. It's about halfway out now. So if you're tightening it and it's not moving, yeah. then make sure your uh, the removal tool inside the diff is in the correct location. Yeah. My GoPro was off for just a second, but when you actually pull it out, it does just come free. So again, have something to catch it. Once you get it out, you want to closely inspect it and make sure there's no missing needles in there. Mm -hmm. So and this no, is the old needle bearing. Right. You wanna make sure there's no missing chunks. That tends to happen when you pull these out is a little broken a little bit. Yeah. If you have any missing chunks, take a little magnet, fish yeah. around in there and get them all out, make sure everything is accounted for. Right. This one though is in one piece, so we don't need to worry about that, but this is trash now. Awesome. Paperweight. Yep. Once you do get that old needle bearing out, go ahead and use some regular needle nose pliers or something like that so you can reach in there and remove the plastic you stuffed in there just to keep everything from leaking out. Don't forget that step. Make sure you get that out of there. Okay, here's a quick side by side. This is the new ECGS clamshell bushing. Sort of dark and overcast, but obviously completely smooth on the inside. And you can see this one, those little rungs are what are called the needles, making this the needle bearing. Another quick tip, you can put the new clamshell bushing in the freezer, let it get cooled off, it'll make the metal shrink just a little bit so it's easier to squeeze into the hole over there. That's what she said. <laughs> Alright, so he has this, what is this set called? It's called like a uh, bearing, race, and seal driver kit. So Alright. Right. You can rent them from AutoZone for free. Okay. Yeah, rent these from AutoZone so you can, uh, he's going to, this will go on the outside, you can see there's different sizes of the outside of the bearing when it's lined up where it needs to be, he's going to hammer that in. He's actually gonna use the handle for his floor jack because that slides in the middle. So he can hit it from out here with a stronger strike versus just sitting in there where it's tight confined, sort of tapping away for all eternity. Okay, so he's gonna get the clamshell bushing started with some light taps so it's not gonna fall out and then switch to the, the handle method so we can use some bigger strikes to get that in there firmly seated. So now we're going to put the CV back in. This is the inside part that goes into the diff. Mm -hmm. You want to get it lined up by hand and then take one of these angle crowbars and put it right there on the little ridge and just tap it in with the hammer. Don't well, need to hit gently. it. Gently. Gently. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to hit it too hard. You'll see it start to go in. Yeah, and then once it gets all the way seated, you'll know because this will be flush with Against. the differential. There we go. It's moving. It. I was going to say, it popped in pretty quickly. I think that might be it. Yeah. All right. Take the nut back off. So this slips back around. 
Watch your finger. Thread the needle. Yeah, it only slides in one way with the teeth, right? Yeah. poking back through rather than fight it the whole time. You don't want it to pop back off while you're doing something else? <laughs> <laughs> I just use this and I watch the back of it as I tighten it up and as soon as it's flush I stop using this mm -hmm. and loosen it back up. This okay. just kind of seats it in. Yeah. That's silver. Yeah, so right now it's just like finger tight. And I won't go in with the torque wrench. Mm, After everything. That was, yeah, that was just to suck it back together, yeah. Because... Is everybody paying attention? The torque of this is critical to your wheel bearing life. Over tightening it or under tightening it can destroy your wheel bearings. This is the one you said was 150, right? 173. Oh, 173, that's right. So this is why most torque wrenches only want 150. So you gotta buy a, buy one. The big boy just for the this. The big boy, which yeah. we'll link in the description below. There you go. Could you catch it on? <laughs> Tie rod back on. Yep. The castle nut on, and then the cotter pin. Yep. After we torque it to spec. Yep. And what's the torque on this? Is. Yeah. I'll have to double check. I think it's. Uh, You're supposed to have all this memorized. I know. It's like 70, 73, I think. Wow. 67 foot pounds torque spec for the tie rod castle nut. I think it lined up with the hole. So there's multiple holes on here. Okay, gotcha. Uh, there's pretty much like pretty much a T. So if one side doesn't line up, like this one doesn't, the check other and the other one should. Oh, awesome. You might need to like tighten it a teeny tiny bit more, but it shouldn't take much. And torque spec for that center big boy bolt right there, the 35 mil 173. And so if we're torquing it down, you can either have someone inside holding the brakes or there put something go. right there. Yep, screwdriver or a punch. your workout for the day. So this castle nut is similar to that to where there's Holes it's all kind of offset so if that doesn't line up that doesn't line up that lines up perfectly. Okay. So just twist it until you get it. Tap the cap back on. Yep, I'll have to use a dead blow. I'll scratch it up. That's it, with that. Okay, so for the last step, he's just opening up the fill plug on the front differential to see if any oil needs to be added. Of course, if you do that and a little oil dribbles out of the fill plug, you're good, otherwise, uh, just go ahead and pump some in until it barely starts to dribble out of the fill plug. And that is it for the install. All right, everybody, that was the installation of the ECGS clamshell bushing on a third gen Tacoma. Again, very similar, if not identical process for the second gen Tacoma, which I'll probably end up doing on my truck sooner or later. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If it was, comment below, give it a thumbs up. As always, thank you so much for supporting the channel by watching this video. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next video.